Mitch Morris, is he really not one of the five best? Plus the real life impact of COVID on the Buffalo Bills and getting set to take on the rookie of the year. All coming up on this week's edition of the Buffalo Plus Podcast. All right, welcome into the Buffalo Plus Podcast. As always, Mike Catalana, Dan Bates, I am Jenna Cottrell. Mike, let's get into this Mitch Morris controversy because it's pretty interesting when you look at it. They brought in Morris a year ago, a nearly $45 million four-year contract. He's had concussions in the past, cleared to play, but yet Sean McDermott still not saying he's the official starter for Sunday. Yeah, I think Sean McDermott took a one-day story and turned it into two weeks myself. (laughs) And he's usually good at doing the opposite. But in this case, because he left it ambiguous, like it's Mitch Morris. Uh, If he's not 100% healthy, they could have easily said he's got to work his way back into the lineup. You know, he was out for a while. We want to get him 100%. He could play if he needed to, all those kind of things. And I think it would have just gone by. But when you basically come out and say he's not one of your five best, when from the outside it would appear that he's one of your five best, Dan, that just seems strange. Yeah, he was asked pretty much straight up about it on Monday. was asked, will Mitch be a starter on Sunday? And he said, we'll see. And that was like alarm bells went off in my head. It was kind of that record scratch moment where I was like, wait, what does he mean? Like the Bills offensive line has struggled at times, especially – against the run this year and getting the fact of having possibly Cody Ford back and getting John Feliciano back and now Mitch Morris like it seemed like this would be the perfect scenario and the Bills offensive line you know they struggled against Seattle Josh Allen was sacked six times that was a game that Morris missed because of the concussion that he suffered in the New England game so that was understandable but then Sean McDermott was kind of questioned about it again and I thought it was a great point of saying like what are we not seeing because the fans and like all of us in the media He's played well this year. What are we missing? And he said, well, the offensive line has found continuity and momentum with Mitch out. And it's like, okay. Like, like you're almost taking a shot at a leader that you have on that offensive line. Jenna, that that was what was confusing to me where he really, like Mike said, a one day story has turned now into multiple week story. And not only that, he doubled down on the fact, Mike, like you said, that he's not one of the best five guys, which I don't, I just don't believe. It's so bizarre to me, too, because not only you brought him in to be that guy, but also he was a part of your team's success last year. And he was a guy that people were excited to see come back, the continuity that he brought, the veteran experience that he brought. Mike, it just doesn't make sense as to why McDermott would skirt the issue. When we've seen him come out and say, hey, I'm not going to tell you about a certain injury update and leave it at that. It's just weird that he would leave it so like such a mystery. And I, can I speculate wildly? here okay please it is the guy coming back from a concussion and i know there's a lot of simplistic people who just say well you're either cleared or you're not which can be the case they're like it's not you know it's not an ankle or a knee i I get that but even when you're cleared on an ankle or a knee it doesn't mean you're a hundred percent and mitch morris's job is to call all the signals to run the line basically right while he's out there maybe he's not ready for that yet but then why activate him? Because maybe because they believe the he can play. He yeah. can play, but they don't want but to But then play. why say that your O-line is right. found That's continuity? That's the confusing part. So many questions. It's just, yeah. it's just bizarre, too, considering we saw there were a lot of questions around Quentin Spain earlier this season. and then well, I guess there's no more questions. I was going to say, <laughs> and now he's with a new team. I, was say, I mean, you could make an team. argument. Except for maybe Dion, who really elevated his play last year, that Quentin Spain and Mitch Morris appeared to be their best two linemen. Well, I yep. think Feliciano has been very good, like when he does come back. But yeah, yeah. But I'm saying is, you know, they 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 got a, that solidified. I mean, obviously they lost Eric Wood early, way earlier than people would have thought. And you bring in a guy like Mitch Morris, and you think he's going to be the guy. Now look, if they've decided he's not. Um, they're paying a guy a lot of money to not play. It's interesting. You talk about a guy that I, you thought would be the guy, just never ended up being it. I thought – there's a name from the past. I thought Ryan Broy – I know this is totally random. I thought wow. Ryan Broy was going to be a stud. I thought that he was one of the best five linemen, and it just never panned out. Now, I don't think that's the case with Mitch Morris. Like you said, Jenna, two years ago they paid him – made him the highest-paid center in the league yeah. at the time. 
it's just crazy how much things could possibly change. It's, he's played 25 games. He's had two concussions just in his time in Buffalo. And now mm-hmm. he's fighting for a spot. And it's just so – I went back to it, and even talking about it now, I think about the way that McDermott could have handled it, who is very close to the vest, is very – methodical in his answer sometimes he just kind of sits there and, and, and kind of pauses for a second and you wonder if it's a zoom thing like okay is he <laughs> is is it is there is there a free you know are we frozen and he could have said several times well we'll see you know he's still he's still like Mike said still getting his way back but he didn't it was almost like he's called out Mitch Morris while complimenting all of the other guys it's so bizarre because also, I can't, as, yeah. I can't imagine when you think of Mitch Morris and like how much of a team guy he really does seem like. It's just there's there's got to be there, I mean there's something there that we're not seeing. Yeah, it's not a Zoom thing. It's a <clears throat> it's a Mac Daddy thing. It's a Mac Daddy. When Mac Daddy pauses, that is Sean McDermott's nickname. Believe it or not, for those yeah. that do not know. <laughs> Although I hope we never say that again. See, now you think about it. Like we think we know Mitch Morris, but we weren't really all in on. The whole Mac Daddy thing. And now, you know, last year we sort of rediscovered that that's it's, his nickname. So sometimes you think you know, but you just don't know. <laughs> that should stay in the past for yeah. sure. Um, all right, we move on now as Tommy Sweeney. Uh, we know the implications of COVID, um, how it's hit other NFL teams. But this was kind of startling and surprising on Monday, Dan, when Sean McDermott talked about the fact that Sweeney, the tight end, he'd been dealing with an injury before. They were hoping to get him back. And then the fact that he was diagnosed by a cardiologist with myocarditis, which is basically heart inflammation, and they believe it's tied to COVID. Um, just a surprising diagnosis and a player that a lot of Bills fans were hoping to get back as well. Yeah, this is uh, 2020 has really kind of been hard for Tommy Sweeney, you know, kind of had some expectations coming into this year um, injury. And then obviously uh, in October was put on the COVID list. He was the first Bills player to test positive for COVID. He was you know, scheduled to kind of come off that list. And obviously McDermott kind of drops the bomb on all of us that, you know, he's, he's dealing with a pretty much a complication of COVID-19 and the serious implications of, and that's, that's one of the good things. I'll, I'll compliment the NFL for one thing that they've done through this COVID protocol, that the players do have to get checked out by cardiologists because, yeah. of, because of the complications of this virus and what it can do to the body. Um, college football is also doing that too. Um, you're seeing that players are out three weeks while they may only be infectious for 10 days. Um, it was the game. It was the Clemson Notre Dame game. You saw t- uh, Trevor Lawrence on the sideline. And everybody's like, well, if he's in COVID protocol, like why is he on the sideline? Like, he's not contagious anymore. He needs to get checked out by a cardiologist 21 days after the fact to make sure this heart's okay. So compliment the NFL and actually the NCAA for getting this right. But this is a serious condition. Like, like Jenna said, it's inflammation of the muscles around the heart. And Tommy Sweeney is now going to be out for the year. I don't think it affects necessarily the grand scheme of the Bills playoff hopes or anything like that, Mike. But it's just one another one of those sobering reminders mm-hmm. that we're trying to play football with a – deadly virus around yeah and and look I think the thought is they many of the people who show this inflammation it returns to relatively normal uh if you watch 60 minutes this week a story about people closer to your age a lot closer than my age about all the complications from COVID it does you know make you worry about everybody and there I, I think what it should make people think about is this this thing that a lot of people have where it's just, well, somebody's got it and they're back on the field in a week. Okay, that's fine. And maybe that is what works out. But it's funny that we bring this up right after we talked about concussions because we've all been in that same mindset of, well, he's cleared from concussion. Get him back on the field. He'll be ready to go. Is he out of protocol yet? Is he out of protocol yet? Yet there's long-term implications on concussions. It's not necessarily the same, but when we think of COVID, we always think of the transmission one person to another. But when you think of concussions, you think of, man, you just said, how many does Mitch have now? Six? Five that was documented. That was Five documented. documented. Yeah. Two with the Bills. That's tough. You know, that's tough on anybody. And now in this case with Tommy Sweeney, like, he's sitting there probably thinking, now, Sean McDermott said, he, you know, he's doing well, his spirits, all that, that's good. And we hope that he's absolutely fine and there's no issue. But you got to be sitting there thinking, man, you know, I signed up to play. I got it, figuring I'll be right back. And now, let alone, hopefully, obviously, he doesn't have any issues, but 
Right. His season is over too. Yeah. And I think that's that's one other thing, Mike, that, that you pointed out about Mitch Morris. I know we're kind of backtracking a little bit, but the fact of – I've seen a bunch of people tweet at me the fact of, well, maybe Mitch is considering retirement. Like, well, maybe. I, I don't know. I have no idea. McDermott hasn't hinted at that. There has been nothing of the sorts of anything credible because I've had multiple people tweet at me saying he's probably considering retirement. Maybe he's going to consider retirement. It wouldn't make sense. It, it, that would be a plausible one, I guess. And whether right. they're trying to work something out, I have no idea. But I just wanted to at least address that I've seen those comments that he's considering retirement when I have no clue if that's true. I have nothing to base that off of. It's just something that I know people have said. Like, you, like you're talking about, Mike, there's bigger things, decisions besides who's the best five linemen on the field. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, it makes sense. And again, you, you mentioned that it is a reminder of both playing football and also the time of 2020 with Tommy Sweeney. I mean, Mike, I feel like the Bills have been, I mean, other than the Sweeney situation, they've had issues, you know, Josh Norman testing positive, Tyler Croft having to go, but how important now is it as we go forward, considering it's the last six games of the season and then the second season starts in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, they're going to try to, I think the Bills have been very good about the way they handle things internally. And they haven't had a major amount of things, but it does happen. And Sean McDermott brought it up the last time. He's like, you know, it's not always the amount or who specifically it is, though it could be. The last time they were getting ready to get on the plane. (laughs) And you find out four guys aren't coming with us. Right? So that's the part. Like these teams, when a guy has an injury, like they're planning the whole week, unless he gets hurt on Saturday morning, they're planning the whole week. They may not have him. They may not have him football wise we're talking about here and then when you have this it's like off the plane off the plane off the plane literally like you guys aren't going with us and it can impact a whole room and all those kind of things that happen so yeah you got to do your best you got to stay and you know the league has tightened up all the protocols everything but but, you know i I just don't want to hear from anybody about it's too much this that the other i don't care about any of that at the moment there are rules. There are protocols. The teams have yeah. to follow it. And if a guy tests positive or is in close contact, he's out for the game. So it's like complaining to me the speed limit says 55 when everybody goes 70. I know you didn't think you'd get a ticket, but you're going to get a ticket, right? Mike would know about that too. <laughs> <laughs> I can get out of them. But anyhow, no, but what I'm saying is yes, but that is the rule. And they're right. going to follow the rules. So you can complain about it or say, oh, it's too much or whatever, you know. Uh, You can go lift weights outside of one Bill's drive like I saw people doing today because they're unhappy about the things. But I'm sorry, that's the rules that are applying right now. And the Bills are figuring out how to live with it. And it's interesting, too. Another person, boy, I never thought I would compliment the NFL, the NCAA. (laughs) And here's another person I'm going to compliment on this podcast. How about Jerry Jones? How about what he's doing? And is quarantining his entire coaching staff inside a hotel so that he can limit the, you know, risks to the family members and other players. Like, I don't know. And that's a team that's in the NFC worst division, still with a chance to win, you know, and play in a playoff game. You guys are overstating it. I mean, those teams have combined for 12 wins this year. What a season. And by the way. Does 3-12 and – wait, what, what, what did you say it was? Would 3 – no, three, four, eleven, and one. These, yes. See, because the Eagles have that tie, the which tie, is kind of the tie is huge now. The tie is huge. Give them credit. The tie is huge. Yeah, yeah. Give them credit for something. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that and that that division is. But I'm just wondering, as the games yeah. get later, and you get, like I said, you start seeing guys get pulled off a plane before a Week Twelve game. You're like, well, that stinks. They get pulled off before an AFC divisional game. It's a whole lot different. I don't know. Like I said, and Sean yeah. McDermott said, there have been outbreaks too, linked to bye weeks of players. Yeah. Relaxed because saying. they're out in the society more and they're not in their bubble pretty much of their facility. And McDermott said today that a lot of players, they still had to come in and get tested on their bye week. So they didn't really get to go on a vacation or go anything like that. But he said that a lot of players were still hanging around because they still felt safer inside <laughs> the facility than they do out in the community, which is terrifying. But also the fact of what measures will the team go to at some point as the games get bigger and more important and this virus continues to seemingly ramp up. 
Yeah. I mean, I remember Sean McDermott saying, even before the season started, like whoever handles COVID the best has the best chance to win. And I think that was a pretty wise statement for it being in August, but there's definitely things to look forward to. It's like, but, where's like, Jake from? Is he been in a bubble, like locked in a closet of one Bills Drive somewhere? <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah. He he's not even at practice. Bit. They don't they don't even let him go anywhere near the players. Well, yeah, I feel like he, that's he's that's like the break in, cl- in case of glass quarterback emergency. <laughs> like he's like what they hope they never have to hit. The light of day because that means things have gone awry. Yeah. Uh, but it goes back to the, the building this week as they get ready to take on the Chargers. They take on look the Chargers, but like three and seven. But Justin Herbert, their rookie QB, uh, has been impressive to say the least. I think three touchdowns against the Jets, no interceptions. Mike, I mean. You've seen a lot of rookie quarterbacks, but yeah. Herbert has been playing well. Yeah, really well. And, I mean, he has, he has talent around him. I mean, that team has talent. They just find really um, entertaining ways to lose. How's that? Yeah. And I feel badly for Anthony Lynn uh, because he might end up losing his job. You know, but, but the rookie quarterback's been good. And it's funny. Herbert was considered the guy who was going to be the number one pick the year before. And he didn't come out. And, uh, and it was sort of like, then Oregon had that kind of year and whatever. And he, you know, he looked spotty at times. But people liked his talent. Um, he does look very um, – he looks very poised when he's out there. Throws a beautiful ball. Um, you know, I, I see some of the – you just can't overstate. People overstate everything about these rookies. You know, I mean, it's like – you know, Bur- Burrow's been great. I mean, he's had a few not so great games, and he's had some picks, and yeah. not really as many. But you know, now unfortunately got hurt. And Tua, uh, you know, the bust was ready in Canton, and now he has a game, and he didn't even make it through the game. So I just think we need to slow down a little bit on the rookie quarterbacks. I don't mean how they're playing now. I mean making long-term projections on these guys. You know, I saw uh, Ian Rappaport tweeted when Burrow got hurt, and he said the Bengals are hopeful that he's, you know, obviously that it's not more than just the ACL, which it ended up being more, uh, but they're comforted in the fact that they have their quarterback for the next 15 years. Wow. 15 years? That's That's Brady, Breeze, Roethlisberger. I don't even think Breeze has been 15 yet. I mean – so can we not with that? Look, I'm watching Wentz after the way he played at the beginning of his career to now. Like, it can happen. It doesn't have to – the fall doesn't have to be that precipitous, but <laughs> you can have a pretty big fall or not just be great or be like Tua and get benched in your – with a five-game winning streak, Dan. I love it. That's, that was one of your top ten – pontifications of 2020. <laughs> I was say, okay, also, Herbert... Like, that was like a classic... Saying, that was a also, great open mic for Mike. Like, that yeah, was just like... Said. Mike was I'm sitting not, on that one, like, all Sunday. My question was about Herbert. He I like Herbert. well. But I'm reading people again. Like, they're making him, like, an all-timer. He's playing... People are crazy. I'm just I saying... I know, but he's playing... playing he's, he's the playing bright spot well. of that Chargers team. Yes. And that's good. It's the. It's the... It's the easiest time. It's the honeymoon time. Nobody's expecting them to win. He's playing loose, right? So that's good. Hey, he could come in and beat the Bills Sunday, right? I mean, he certainly could. He can, he can throw the ball. But I, What's up, dog? Yeah. <laughs> no, but By the I, way, and he got his hair cut, too. What do you think of the haircut? The haircut was a oh, bad. Was the tough. haircut's the worst move he's made all season. <laughs> um, yeah. But, Mike, I, I think it's, again – I've always said that, especially in the media, things are always the greatest or the worst. Like, there's no in between. Like, it's not – that doesn't sell. Like, if you're like, yeah, the guy's – you know, he's okay. Like, that doesn't get clicks. That doesn't get sells. That doesn't – you know, that that doesn't do anything for people. Um, Because I remember my big one was always when Yasiel Puig came up. And they were like, he's the greatest player since he's Babe Ruth and Ken Griffey and Mickey Mantle and he's he's all of them. And I was like, can we just, like, let the guy play 60 games? I'm with you, Mike. Because, again – just because Tua had a bad game doesn't mean Tua's a bust either. And right. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Like, it's like, just I, like I saw a lot of Bills fans reveling in the fact that Tua now stinks. And yeah. n- n- no, he doesn't. No. He, he's also not great. He doesn't like, stink. 
because it's too early on all that. And then right. you can be like, look at what Lamar Jackson did. Yeah. Honestly, he set the bar so high last year. Dude, he looks you bad. knew he was going to come back a little bit, yeah. right? And, you know, he's come back a pretty decent amount. And they're not winning those close games. It's not all on the Moss exposed. But because I want to get back to Jenna's original point, I really like this kid exactly. throwing the ball. I think he's a pretty Full good circle. quarterback. We went all the way around the block here. Yeah, but I, I, I have a lot to get out here. I'm so glad that Mike got Wentz in there. Yeah. I'm just so glad Mike got Wentz in there and he got Lamar Jackson in there. Because this is when where did I yeah. Herbert. Well, and how about, you know, I mean, you go back to RG3. That was an injury, yeah. but like I mean, he was spectacular as a rookie. And I'm not saying and then there's other guys who maybe, you know, just I mean, Jared Goff couldn't find the football field as a rookie. And, you know, then went to the Super Bowl a couple of years later. So I just so it's the short-term amount of information we have and the long-term reactions to it. Right. Okay, first take. I know they're hot takes on ESPN. We're saying, did Miami draft the wrong guy by taking Tua instead of going for Herbert? I mean, after would you have had that exact same conversation a week before? No, no. because Tua yeah. was the darling. Well, yeah. So anyhow, so Herbert's first pretty good. Fault. That's why Mike can't sleep at night because it's first take. He's got rolling around his head. <laughs> he's got Skip Bayless dancing. Yeah. Oh. That's what he's got. Oh, no, okay. You look like a robot. Not well. <laughs> anyway, I, going back to the original question. Yes. Justin Herbert it? can light up this Bill secondary. He has yeah. the ability. He has the weapons. He can also, I mean, I keep betting against Justin Herbert in a lot of games because I'm waiting for the rookie regression or the slip yeah. up, and he hasn't had it. He's had two plus touchdowns in seven straight games. He's the first rookie to ever do that. He's he's not the reason they're losing games. Like there are other issues around that team, but right. he has a lot of talent at his wide receiver positions. Really good with Keenan Allen. Um, they don't run the ball extremely well, which makes me feel a little bit better going up against Buffalo this week. You know, obviously Levi Wallace has been cleared, um, and you hope that what no, who knows what happens with. Um, Josh Norman, but Dane Jackson has played well, you know. So I, I, I just think that this is another game that could be in the 30s, like we have seen. And, and you just don't want to have that letdown because they really got up to play Seattle. They were still up to play another high-powered offense in Arizona. They're not – the Chargers aren't on that level, but they're not a big step down either. No. And we saw what happened in Miami going to Denver. And I think this Chargers team is better than Denver – and Vegas made a killing on that game. Everybody, 97% of the money was on Miami. Wow. Wow. Mine. Really? Including mine. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, you, you can't go with all the money. I, you got to hedge somewhere. <laughs> but the, the nice thing is they already have the Boston Canton for Tua started. So they can just set it aside and wait to get that thing ready. Is there anything else you want to say, Mike, before we wrap up? No, I just – I just – it out there. I just – it's just the the short term for long term. It's just we can't – we can't just watch guys no. progress. Troy Aikman would have never made it through to his second year. I mean, I mean he's he, awful. It is. Peyton Jordan Manning was awful as a rookie. Jordan it wouldn't have survived in this era. Oh, no, Jordan was really good as a rookie. But it yeah. is interesting, though, because especially, like, to bring it back to Bills fans, I feel like people aren't accepting the fact that Josh Allen has gotten better because they cling on to those, like, initial yeah. reactions of he's a bust and he sucks. Oh, by the way, and Jenna, you brought up a good point. And while we're here, since we do it every week, let's also embrace that this is a Brian Dable positive podcast because be really happy – three years of the same guy because we have yeah. seen it around the league yeah. and you start messing with what a quarterback has. And it's not necessarily right away. Like, Oh, the guy can't play, but it's when things start going the wrong way. I mean, Josh had a little stretch there in the middle of the year. looks like Dable got him back again or combination of everybody, but boy, you can't, you can't overstate that the importance of that continuity when it's working well. Yeah. And uh, you know, we'll see how the rest of, the, the future goes with those two, but 
boy, it'd be good to keep him around a little while longer. And Dave was saying in his press conference on Monday, in terms of getting the team better and doing like a self critique, it takes having those relationships to really be honest with one another. And I think that plays into the foundation of yeah. having high expectations and being able to work with someone, especially when you've worked with them. Yeah. For three years. And, and the ability to run the ball. <laughs> we are ending this podcast before we get started on that note. All right, make sure to tune into more Buffalo Plus content as well as check out Buffalo Plus on YouTube and buffaloplus.com. For Mike Catalano, who's just starting stuff tonight, and Dan Fade, I'm Jenna Cottrell. <laughs> we'll catch you next time.